Hi guys, my name is Luis Chantry and welcome to another Berlitz English video. In this video, I want to address you whether you are a lawyer or a law student. How is your legal English coming along? We will see some vocabulary and a few expressions. And we'll also learn a bit about the world of contracts, petitions, and documentation to help you get ready for legal action. Let's start with the basic part, legal vocabulary in English. Unlike what we're used to learning in English as a lawyer, what we will use is quite specific and requires, as in Portuguese, more elaborate and polished language. It's also crucial to know the terms and expressions related to a lawyer's practice, especially to properly interpret contracts, petitions, and judgments when necessary. So let's learn together words and expressions related to the world of law. Firstly, remember that there are more than two ways to refer to a lawyer in English. The first and most common use is a lawyer, which is used to talk about a legal professional, lawyer or not. However, there's also the term attorney, which is specifically used to refer to a practicing lawyer, solicitor, advocate, and barrister, or other terms used to refer to a lawyer depending on the country and also the practice. Some of the most common areas of legal practice are civil law and criminal law. Depending on your area of practice, you may come into contact directly with the judge or with the jury, and also with prosecutors. Oh, and we can't forget about the defendant. If you work in the business field, there are some other more common words like a contract and also a breach of contract, which can refer to a failure to comply with the contract itself. So it's possible to say the plaintiff sued the defendant for a breach of contract. Taking advantage of our discussion on contracts, let's have a look at the structure of contracts in English. Unlike Brazilian contracts, which generally have a more formal and rigid structure, English contracts are more flexible. Moreover, due to their flexibility and adaptability to realities, there is a tendency for English contracts to be more detailed and address specific aspects of the relationship between parts. Ready for a valuable tip? Get to know the vocabulary and how it's used well. That way, you already ensure a good part of your understanding of the contract. The rest will be situational. Common expressions in English contracts are whereas, which means considering that. For example, whereas the seller desires to sell and the buyer desires to purchase the goods, for example. Another very common expression in contracts is the parts agree, which means as partes concordam. For example, the parts agree that the purchase price of the property will be $50,000. Correspondence requires clarity, conciseness, and professionalism to convey information. However, there are some very important peculiarities when sending a message in English. Typically, in a letter, we start with Dear Mr. or if the recipient is male or Dear Mrs. for female. Another important point is that when closing a formal letter, commonly used expressions include sincerely, best regards, or yours truly. In emails, I need to remind you to check if there's a direct correspondence of your current position there. For example, if you're a lawyer specializing in civil law, I recommend signing off as a civil lawyer so the recipient is certain of who you are. Oh, and very important, don't forget to use the date format as they use it in the States, if your client is from there. So remember that they are accustomed to using the date as month, day, and year. Not only documents are essential for a lawyer, right? A crucial part is attending hearings. Therefore, besides having language proficiency for this specific case, it will be essential to understand the customs and practices of the American legal system. The first point to consider is that the American legal system is adversarial where each part presents its arguments and evidence to the judge or to the jury. Moreover, witnesses are interrogated by the parts and by the judge or jury. So having your questions ready will be essential. Negotiations are also common in American civil cases. Therefore, it's crucial that you are technically prepared to negotiate and reach a settlement. For this reason, practice extensively alone and with experienced professionals to thoroughly understand all aspects related to the hearing and common expressions used. And don't forget that there are several series that can also help you improve your listening skills to quickly recognize what is being said. And when each thing happens, uh, examples are Law in Order, 
Suits, How to Get Away with Murder, among other series. Well, we've reached the end of another video here on our channel. If you're a lawyer looking to improve your English, comment down below and let us know what your biggest challenge is. I hope you have enjoyed this video, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one to help you improve your English. Catch you later, guys. Bye.